not hearing anything so far. So I think at this point, we're going to move on to the next thing that the typesetter would do, which is um, paging a document. So another new term here, paging. When I say paging, I mean uh, setting up the proper master pages so that if something says, you know, like chapter two, it has the same master page as something that says chapter one. So they all look the same. We want to do that early on in the process as well because we're going to be moving a lot of text. And so I want the text to be in the proper place before I do those little granular checks so that I'm not, you know, worrying about too many issues at the same time. Like I don't want to be looking for granular text and paging my book because like Elvis said in the editorial thing, at Scribe, we like to just reduce the amount of things we're working on to one single issue because it's very easy to make multiple mistakes if you're looking for multiple things or you catch the paging uh, correction, but you don't catch the three letter stack on the, on the right side of the book because your brain's trying to do too much stuff at once. So we just try to make it easy on everybody's brain. So for now, we're just kind of setting our pages for the book. Um, I mean, here we can see, uh, they definitely don't want all the stuff to be on one page. They have series page text, title page text, things like that. Um, a couple different ways to do that. I can limit the size of my text box to purposely shoot text over to the next page. So let's say I, I just decide to do that there. Um, to do that, if you wanted to follow along, you would grab your, you know, this little black arrow, the selection tool. And then when you select the text box, you should, should see little anchor points pop up. I can grab any one of those anchors and you know, make it wider, make it taller. But for now, I want to take the bottom and move it all the way up just so that it interrupts this series page text and shoots it over to the next page. So now we need to break this over to the next page here. I'm going to do it in a different method. And it gets into uh, sort of issues related to special characters and things like that. So I'll show you what I mean here. I want to put a character after this last set, series page line to move this over because there's different kinds of breaks in InDesign. Uh, these are what we would call hard returns or paragraph breaks. Um, I'll put in another one here. If I press shift enter, you see this little hook. That's what's called a soft return. Those get removed automatically later on when we look at uh, another scribe tool. But now I want to put in something called a uh, column return. So you'll see here under type break character, there's a lot of different types of breaks, frame breaks, page breaks, things like that. I'm going to put in a column break here. And you'll see it just shoots anything after that to the next frame or column. But it also moves the paragraph break that was in front of it. So when we're typing, we want to make sure to realize that those breaks aren't just instructions, but they exist as actual characters in the file. So what we need to do is just delete this because we don't want because you know, we don't want extra hard returns later. Those hard returns will come in as like empty tags if they have a style applied to them or other possible issues. So we just want to make sure that we're not breaking things like that. Um, I'll mention that because Another thing to look out for if you, maybe this goes back to our design file. You know, I think it's common for a lot of typesetters who work in other um, systems to just sort of put in a bunch of spaces to space things out. You know, they want there to be more space between these. So they're going to say, oh, I'm just going to put in like five breaks and that's how I want it to look. Um, you might not realize from just looking at a PDF how they did that, but again, because trying to work in InDesign and look at the actual guts of the file. I can see all these extra hard returns if you have hidden characters turned on. And if we were to extract this and move ahead with it in our final electronic version, then I would have book one and then a bunch of extra tags and then book two and then a bunch of extra tags. And let's say in your CSS, you said that this tag has, you know, um, 40 points of space above it in your CSS, you define it to have 40 points of space above. Well, now you have about 10 of them and your series page goes on for three pages because you have all this extra junk stuff in it. So that's one of the reasons why we always say if we need to adjust spacing, we're going to adjust it in the paragraph style and not insert all these extra hard returns. So we're really looking for the lean, clean, 
file where everything is good. Oh, and Karen, your, to your question, it's under type and insert break character. Yeah. So these are the kind of, you know, these are the kind of uh, changes that we're going to be making as we go through. Um, here's the third type of way to break stuff. We just told CTFM to break on a next page. And I'll show you where to do that. So now I'm going to change the behavior of the style in order to help us do to or, or to help us page these documents. So I want to select CTFM over here. This is under paragraph style. I can uh, right-click that, say edit. And it brings up paragraph styles options. You might remember this from uh, when we were working through the design and trying to define what all these things look like. But there's an option called um, keep options. And we can say anything tagged with this starts on the next page, or it starts in the next frame, or it starts on the next odd page. So this is kind of helpful because similar to using that tool to reduce bad breaks, now we can use this option to help us page the book. If I know that every chapter starts with a chapter number, I can say, well, chapter number starts on a new odd page every single time, so that I'm not going through and breaking things manually. It's happening automatically just as a result of the behavior of that style. Um, so there's you know three quick ways of sort of helping us page the book. We can either tell a style to break to a certain page, or we can manually do it, but doing it in such a way that we don't introduce errors like blank returns and things like that. Um, question so far? Because at this point, we're just making sure that every text starts on the correct type of page. You can see in the, in the design, it happens kind of automatically just based on where things flow together. Just let me know any questions or anything like that. Just let me know. Good to go. Yeah. This is kind of a silly one. Um, sure. <clears throat> so my character styles and paragraph styles are floating as a separate box, and I like how mm. yours are integrated in your view. How do I do yep. that? So I'll, I'll get mine. So you have it sort of like that, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So all you do is you grab where the actual name is, so you can kind of move it around. Mm -hmm. And if you were to drag it into another one, it'll like assume to sync them up together. And so if I were something like, if I had something like this and I wanted to keep this with my pages document, I would then not drag it on top of it, but drag it under. You get this kind of blue highlight and then it like links it to the bottom of that next box. Great. Thanks. Man, I feel like for most of our typesetting, that's where I live. Like I have my pages and master pages and then different styles. I'm gonna shoot this guy off to the next page. And again, I'm just using different um, different options that we just kind of talked about. Let's just go back there just to show you again. Um, I see I have the summary box on the chapter opener page. We know either from our example PDF that it should start on its own page over here. So the typesetter needs to make sure that this text gets moved over to the next page. I could drag that box up and move it over. Similarly over here. And I'll just ask a, like a quick kind of concept question, because I said that certain um, styles will start on their own pages. Is there a reason that I wouldn't want to do it with something like this? Like this is an A head, like this is an A head. Now it would be nice if it could just automatically start over there. But is there a reason that I might want to might not want to tell a head to move over to the next page automatically? Because at least in this instance up here, it would be pretty handy. I, 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 one less thing I have to do. So just looking for what you know, what issues could we hit with saying, well, I want a head to start on the next page, so I'll tell the style to move over to the next page. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, I don't want this A head to start on the next page. So that's why we, I wanted to show you guys, you know, different options. If I were to say, oh, well, that one instance, it's really helpful. So I'm gonna tell all the A heads to just start on the next page. Well, now we're ending up with all these weird little gaps. In this instance, 
B head is based on A head. I don't know if you if you recall, we were basing styles on each other last time. So now that also starts on its own page. So there's different occasions where we choose what automatically breaks versus what we have to kind of manually break. Okay. All right, so no questions before we move on. I'll kind of run through different other procedural steps and then talk about a couple different flexibility options that are built into our typesetting. It can be whatever, you know, general typesetting questions, things you might be wondering about at this point. Okay. Right, well, I'll just kind of keep moving on then and going through the document and talking about just in, in broad strokes what the typesetter is going to be doing as they go on. <laughs> 